dealing with horrible disease symptoms, or maybe we've had a diagnosis of some type of autoimmune disease. And if you've been following my work, I've been really trying to help bring the word out, educate people that probably the biggest cause of your symptoms is a parasitic infestation. And then we go to our doctors and we say, could, it, could I have parasites? And then our doctors say, no, unless you've traveled to an undeveloped country, parasites are really not common. That's why we need to talk about this because I'm going to share with you today many, many different ways that we do become infected with parasites. If we haven't met, my name is Pam Bartha. I am the author of Become a Wellness Champion and the founder of Live Disease Free. And it is my honor to share this with you because I understand parasitic infestations. I was diagnosed with MS years and years ago and Thank goodness I discovered early on that infections were causing the disease that I was dealing with, MS. And I've had the amazing privilege now to coach hundreds of others in their recovery from not just multiple sclerosis, but other chronic diseases. And I can tell you that the sicker that people are, the more infested they are with parasites. And how do we get these parasites? What if we haven't traveled to another country? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And before I continue, before we get started, please like this video and share it. Help me get the word out if you like me sharing this type of information, because you are the ones that by sharing it and liking it, then Facebook and YouTube will show it to other people. We need to have this discussion. This is a very important discussion because it is true that parasites are all around us and also, I just wanted to share too that if maybe this is the first training you've listened to of mine, make sure that if you're on YouTube, because we have people on YouTube and on Facebook joining me right now, so make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I'm going live next time, because it's really nice. You can ask questions when I'm live. So the topic again for today is how do we become infected with parasites if we haven't traveled to third world countries or undeveloped countries and maybe some of us have traveled but there are a lot of parasites in our own country where we live if we're living in a developed country the scientific american blog one of their blog posts they shared that nematode roundworms are the most abundant animals in the whole world so worms are animals they're still classified as an animal and four out of every five animals in on planet earth is is a roundworm is a worm so this is why we have to really understand that this, they're all around us. They're in our food. They're in our, we're going to talk about all the different ways that we become infected, but their title for that blog post, it said nematodes are the most abundant animal in the world. So there are six ways. There's more probably, but six main ways that we do become infected with parasites. So the first one is from the food that we eat. And this doesn't matter if you are eating animal protein or whether you're vegan, you, can, you are still exposed to parasites. So for example, how many of you like sushi, right? I love sushi, but I don't eat it because I did a science degree and I looked at a lot of worms and I just know that they can be, can, it can be contaminated with uh, the raw sushi, right? This, sashimi for example so raw fish definitely is often contaminated with parasites and yes it does help when they take the fish and they freeze it for a certain amount of time for a certain temperature and that will definitely kill a lot of the eggs and parasites in the fish but not necessarily all of them and sometimes it's not frozen properly and so actually Later, after we're done this, if you want to go to my Facebook, Live Disease Free Facebook page, we just put a post up of this poor woman who was eating raw fish and she ended up getting a sore throat. And they, it just, I think it persisted. And so she ended up getting it checked and they found this worm in her throat. So there was a larva or immature form that got into her system and it lodged itself in her tonsils and started to develop into a full blown worm. And so they pulled the worm out. So yes, do you guys like 
sushi. Like I, if I eat sushi, it is not raw fish because I just want to be careful. And then the next thing is maybe you eat out and, or you'd like to cook your fish where like a lot of people like to have it medium, right? So that it's still pink inside or even steak, etc. We do run the risk when we don't fully cook our meat and I know it tastes better and it's more tender, but we do run the risk of being exposed to parasites then. It's definitely an option. Another thing I want you to think about is at Costco, for example, and maybe other stores, but I know Costco for sure, it drives me crazy when they, um, it's called tenderizing the meat where they stick these metal prongs in. So from meat to meat, they tenderize it where they're pushing these little needles into the meat. And that can definitely, definitely pass parasites from one piece of meat to the next. So, and they also, if there would be parasites on the outside of the meat, then it would be pushing it on the inside. So if you're eating medium steak, etc., or roast, then please be aware that you could be exposing yourself to parasites there. And then also um, in our store, so this is where maybe we don't eat animal meat, maybe we're vegan or vegetarian, and we just really rely on plant for, for our food. When, a couple of things I want you to think about is that our produce is coming in from all over the world. And there are different countries that use different types of fertilizers and sometimes they might use animal or human waste even to fertilize the produce and, and even animal waste, for example, to fertilize the produce. So there can be parasites coming in on produce. And if we don't wash it properly, then we can become infected with parasites just from fruit and vegetables. And so it's very, very important to understand that. And eating out, for example, how many of you guys like to eat out? We, it's nice to have a break and to eat out in a restaurant. Well, whoever's preparing your food, if they have parasites <clears throat> and if they have not used proper sanitation, and it's not just rinsing your hands quickly under the water, you have to use soap and you have to count, I think it's to at least 20 seconds to really effectively get rid of egg eggs, for example, that would be on your fingers and then also under your fingernails. So those are <clears throat> different ways that we get parasites through our food. I know that in our hometown here, they are regional district. They make this compo composting material that people put in their gardens and in their flower beds. And they call it biosolids from the wastewater. So they are treating the biosolids. So from the sewers, the human feces, they are treating it. But are they treating it well enough? Because if we don't believe we have parasites, so sure, maybe we're killing off the smaller bacteria, for example, and smaller protozoa. But are they treating it well enough to get rid of the parasite, persistent parasite eggs? That is a good question. So I personally would not be putting that type of composting material in my garden, in my vegetable garden. I know that it's rich with nutrients, but there's a lot of other waste and also the parasite possibility. So those are just a few ways that in our developed countries that we can pick up parasites from our food. Now let's talk about our water. Where we live in an, a, a city, where the water is treated, it's municipally treated water, and we use chlorine, and sometimes they use ultraviolet, and there's other ways that they're using to treat the water to kill the bad parasites that and other microbes that are in our water. But sometimes, I'm turning 59 years old in a couple of weeks, but in my lifetime, in our wonderful cities in Canada that I've lived in, sometimes the chlorinator has not worked. And you know, we might be just drinking water and thinking, oh, I just have this upset stomach, I wonder why, and then you get a notice that the chlorinator wasn't working. Or sometimes there's more um, organic matter in the water, so the water quality is changed, and you get water warnings about um, if there's more or more organic matter in the water that can also harbor some of these smaller parasites. So those are just two ways. And of course, when we're traveling, we have to be really careful that we are drinking safe water that has been disinfected, has all the parasites have been killed for sure. 
So schistosomiasis and amoebas and cryptosporidium, giardia, these are all different types of parasites that we can get from water and also guinea worm. Uh, these are all parasites that we can get, and I'm sure there's others. Swimmer's itch. So we have this beautiful big lake where we live. And sometimes the geese and the ducks, they really like to frequent an area of the lake. And they are infected with this parasite that causes swimmer's itch. And with my son, it was a few years ago, he was just, I don't think he went even all the way into the water, but he had water up to his waist probably. And then after a few hours later, he had these big welts all over his leg. And so that's a parasite that kind of, if you don't rub the water off and rub the parasites off, then they actually will go in under your skin and cause a lot of pain for a few days. So I hope that throughout this, I'm not wanting to make you paranoid about parasites, but helping you to understand that parasites are all around us and we just have to be aware of that. And as we are aware of it and as we treat them, especially when we're dealing with disease symptoms or chronic disease, and we treat them and we decrease the population of them in our body, and then we do regular parasite treatments at least once or twice a year, that really, really improves our quality of life. So ways to prevent um, I wanted to talk about soil-based worms too, because soil is another way that we can. So we talked about food, we talked about water, and let's talk about soil. So just quickly, there are actually worms that if you're walking barefoot, that can act, so the hookworm can actually attach itself and work its way into us. So in the soil, there can be eggs and there can be worms and immature forms. And so we have to be really careful there too. So this is not just in third world countries. What I want you to understand is, number one, do you have a pet, for example? Does your pet go to the bathroom in your yard, on your grass, right? And so our pets, we're gonna talk about pets in a few minutes because that's another great source of parasites, but they are eliminating parasites and eggs through their, uh, especially the eggs, through their stool or their feces into the grass, etc., And it's really important that we understand that. And if we're, you know, cleaning it up relatively quickly, but there can still be some residual in the grass. So this is why we'll talk more about how important it is, but it's really important to maybe have your animals putting their waste in a separate area where kids and grandkids and adults are not walking barefoot all the time. Really important. So so again, just being aware of walking barefoot in areas that are contaminated with worms would be, especially cookworms, would be really good to avoid that for sure. Let's talk about our pets. I love pets. We, we're a real big dog family, and so we've had dogs in our family for many years. I grew up on a farm. I love animals. I'm not going to give up animals because there are parasites. But we have to understand that if we are around a lot of animals, we are possibly exposed to them more often. And before I knew all of this, I really, we didn't deworm our dogs often. Like I know that it's recommended that you should, but we just really didn't appreciate how significant this was. But our pets, and this is all pets, this would be dogs and cats and rabbits and and uh, birds, any type of pet. Sometimes some of us have rodents. Maybe not the fish, but be careful with the fish water for sure too. And so we know, like myself, experience that our dogs would roll in the grass and in the dirt. They love to find places where there's a dead animal and they like to roll in it. They like to roll in the, the feces of another, like a cow or a horse. I don't know why, but they like to do that. I've pulled a big fat dead mouse out of my dog's mouth before. So they're exposed, they're drinking water, untreated water all the time when you take them for a walk. Like our dogs, we like to take them off leash. And so they get into little puddles and they drink disgusting water. So our pets, cats and dogs, et cetera, that are able to be outside and we want them to be outside. It's healthy for them to be outside, but they are exposed to parasites. And so we should be deworming them several times a year. And I believe the vets say at least two to three times or quarterly a year. Very, very important. And our pets, especially the dogs and cats, they're really big sources of hookworms and roundworms and tapeworms and whipworms. 
So our students that are recovering from multiple sclerosis and other chronic diseases, we have tons of pictures of roundworms, some of them up to two feet long. And when the students are passing them, they feel better and better and better. It's just absolutely shocking and amazing. So again, you know, if we have pets and this is our horses also, we are, we are around parasites definitely need to wash our hands and not just a little rinse but again scrubbing maybe if we've been working with our animals a lot use even using something to scrub under our fingernails would not hurt and give it the 20 second rule for for washing your hands with soap what my daughter-in-law does that's really fun is she'll take the grandkids and she'll have them say their abcs when they're washing their hands with soap so that gets gets them through the at least the 20 minutes or 20 seconds i should say uh, a few things I wanted to make you aware of. So this is not just Alberta, but we saw an article that in Alberta, Canada, that the coyotes have this tapeworm. And the tapeworm is being passed from coyotes to dogs and to humans. And this tapeworm likes to live in the liver of any whatever the host is. And so if it's living in us, we would be the host. And one lady had this big tumor in her liver, and I shared, we've shared that on, I'm sure on our Facebook page, the Live Disease Free Facebook page, a few months ago. She had this huge tumor in her liver, and it was just a bunch of tapeworm eggs. Awful. So we know that these worms can produce tons and tons of eggs. They can produce some of them up to 100,000 eggs in a day. All right, that's a lot. And this is what we're up against. And this is why we have to be a little bit more diligent because this can help us to prevent chronic disease. We have to treat them, obviously, but we can also reduce our risk of being infected by them. And then some of you might have cats. Do you have a cat? So in the feces of the cat, there is a protozoa and uh, cat, cat scratch fever is something else, which is uh, Bartonella, which is a type of parasite bacteria. And that can come from, let's say if you have a wound that the cat licks, or maybe um, I know sometimes cats can bite or scratch and they can infect us with Bartonella. And it's, it's not a good thing to have. It give, give us a lot of horrible symptoms. Also birds. One website that I looked at, they were talking about how birds can carry at least 60 different diseases. So those diseases are different types of microbes. And when we have a healthy gut, let's say when we have a strong microbiome and we're exposed to the parasites, like maybe they're on our fingers, they're in our food, we talked about all the ways, and we had, let's say, have lots of hydrochloric acid in our stomach, it's some, a lot of them will be killed there, but then we've got this thick growth of healthy microbes that prevents them from establishing themselves in our intestines, then a lot of times, and a strong immune system, then a lot of times our immune system will deal with them. But not always. Many of us, like myself, have been on a lot of antibiotics in the past. When I was a child, every time we got a fever, the doctor said, get your kids on antibiotics. So my mom was really worried about having strep throat affect our heart. And so every time we were sick, it was antibiotics. As a teenager for acne, I used antibiotics, several months of tetracycline. So my natural defense was incredibly devastated. And then I grew up on a farm and I helped my dad in the pig barn and we had cows and we had bunnies and we had dogs and we had cats and we, we had all the animals. And I was exposed to a lot of parasites and nobody was able to test, like the tests are really poor, so nothing showed up and it progressed and progressed with more stomach aches and digestive issues and then it progressed into multiple sclerosis at the age of 28. So that is the case for most of us. It's usually the overuse of antibiotics, our microbiome has been devastated and then the circumstances in our life really build up at that point. So we talked about our food, we talked about water, we talked about the, um, the animals. I'd like to talk about, and we talked about the soil also, really important. And I wanted to also share about insects because sometimes we are bitten by any type of a biting insect. So this is mosquitoes, horse flies, fleas, ticks, um, all of these biting insects. 
just want to make sure I didn't, yeah, t ticks, fleas, mosquitoes, lice, that's what I forget, and horse flies. So any biting insect, when they bite us, a lot of times they draw blood and they're infecting us as they do that. But then sometimes when they're drawing blood from us, because that's how they feast, they are actually dropping their feces onto our skin and that's how we become infected with the parasites also. So some of us might be aware of Lyme disease, right? And that would be Borrelia, Bartonella, Babesia, Ehrlichia. There are many different microbes that travel together and cause Lyme disease. So we become infected with those. Babesia is very common with multiple sclerosis. So again, it can be from the saliva of the insect as they are drawing blood from us, or it can just be as they're depositing their waste on us. And the last one I wanted to just quickly mention is blood. So sometimes we might have blood transfusions or none of us, but if anyone shares needles, for example, we can pass parasites that way. So that's not as common, but definitely if we had to have a blood transfusion, then we could be exposed to whatever parasites were in the blood. And I do know they try to clean it, but some of them definitely could be in there. So the key is, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how, again, we can avoid these parasites. Number one is washing your hands. So I always, like when we're around our dogs and our animals, we wash our hands. I wash my hands all the time. And don't put your fingers in your mouth. When you're working with animals, just keep your hands out of your mouth and wash them. At least 20 seconds with lots of soap. If you've been around animals a lot, maybe use a little brush under your fingernails, but that is really, really important. Secondly, if you have an, a pet, make sure that they're not sleeping in your bed because definitely you're exposed to a lot more parasites that way. And then have them also dewormed often. Make sure to deworm them. And when they're depositing their waste in your yard, have an area for them that so that if kids and grandkids and yourself, you're out and about, you're not stepping in it and clean it up promptly. It's really worthwhile to clean it up immediately so that it doesn't get stepped on and the, the parasites cannot move out into areas, especially if maybe they're the larva form. With food, make sure to wash and it'll take more than just water. Um, you can use like natural soaps, um, certain, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. And I know there's other things that you can use that would disinfect. Again, this is the hard thing. You don't want to destroy all the good microbes that are on vegetables, but if there is a risk that it is contaminated with parasites, especially things that are not coming from local. So things that are coming from other parts of the world, for example, produce, etc. make sure to wash it really well. And then when you're having your own garden, make sure to use safe things, natural or, or organic fertilizers that are safe, that are not contaminated with, he, especially the human feces, because even though they've been treated, I would just be really careful with that. You can even wear gloves when you're gardening. Um, oh, if you have kids, make sure to cover the sandbox because there's always a neighborhood cat that will come down into your yard and do their business in the sandbox, which will be horrible for your kids. Um, so those are some different ways. And then as far as your meat, be careful when you're purchasing meat that has been tenderized. Be aware that, that it, there's cross, there can be cross-contamination and it can be pushing parasites deeper into the meat. And also with sushi, be really careful with the raw fish. And I think about this a lot because this is my whole world, helping people recover. So even I haven't honestly been eating sushi for a while. I really like the, I, I love raw fish, but I don't eat it because I know too much about worms. And as far as sushi, I just sometimes wonder like if they're handling fish that could be contaminated and then they're handling, like, are they washing their hands well enough in between? So we could possibly be contaminated with fish, sorry, with sushi that doesn't even have raw fish in it. So just be aware. That's why the World Health Organization says that we should all periodically deworm. And we, that's what we do in the Live Disease Free Academy to help our students recover from chronic disease. We have to treat aggressively because they're really infested. So this is a high level of infestation. But then when we're well, then we should really be definitely deworming at least once or twice a year. So what I'd like to do right now is go to your questions and see if you guys have any questions for me. So I hope I made you think 
right? That you don't have to travel to an underdeveloped country to pick up parasites. They are in your food, they are in your water, they're in your soil. If you're gardening, they're in the soil, right? They are in, sorry, they're in the food, water, soil, and they are also blood in our blood and our pets, again, are a huge source of parasites. All right, so I'm gonna go to your questions. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Mary Lou. So with the heat, think about it this way. If you're infested with parasites, so Mary Lou, you have multiple sclerosis. You are infested with parasites. How do I know this? Because I've worked with over 600 people helping them in their recovery, and I have hundreds of pictures. Like the sicker we are, the more infested we are. Parasites don't like to be overheated. So when you become overheated, they act out and you feel worse. So we've seen this lots. And that is why as you treat them, you'll see that you can handle the heat again. Hi, KJ. You're very, very welcome. Hi, Lorena. Hi, Yema. Nice to meet you also. Hi, Irene. How do you know if we have parasites? That's a really good question, Yema. What I'd like you to do is when you're done here, go to the Live Disease Free YouTube channel. And I just, I think three or four weeks ago, I did a video on the common symptoms of parasites. They are everything from head things like mood, cognitive function, memory, etc., and all the way down to gut issues. And it just neurological symptoms, migraines, they're varied. It depends on which parasites you have and where they're living in your body. I just wanted to share too, which was really fascinating. Today I was speaking with a gentleman who'd like to work with us in the Live Disease Free Academy, and he has multiple degrees. He has, he's got his veterinarian degree and biochemistry, I think PhDs in both of them, and another degree. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and when he watched my masterclass training, How to Recover from MS, that was the first time he's ever heard that what he's dealing with is parasites. And with his veterinarian training, he was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense, because he was like, when I talked to him, he said, I talked to my doctors and I said, well, if it's really our, our, my immune cells, the B cells and the T cells that have gone awry have gone they're attacking my my nerves if that is the case then why are they not affecting other parts of the body why are they only attacking a certain thing if they have gone haywire and if they're we need to destroy them because they're because that's what we do is we use chemotherapy to wipe out our b cells that's just one of the drugs and they're like wow well, we don't know we don't know what's causing it we don't know why but that's just the way it is and he's like, this just doesn't make any sense. And then when he learned that his MS was caused by parasites, he was like, bingo, this is the answer. And he's so super excited. This is gonna change his life. With his background and getting recovering, like it is going to change his life. How many people can, and that's the thing with the wellness champions is once you figure this out and you recover, you just want to help other people. So Yema, make sure to watch that video, Common Symptoms of Parasites. You'll find that on actually Facebook or YouTube, Live Disease Free. Frida, is bottled water okay? There were some different, um, I would say, what do you call them? Like in science, not science, news, uh, journalism, people that were looking into bottled water and it really depends on the source. So sometimes the bottled water is good and sometimes it isn't. It is not filtered like it should be. And so this is where you just have to really know the source. Hello, Anne. I'm so happy that you're following my advice. Awesome, you're starting to change your diet and you're feeling much better. But make sure that when you're ready that you start to treat the parasites. So the eating plan is the first step decreasing the carbs those parasites love carbohydrates and sugar decreasing enough down to the 35 to 40 total grams of carbs fiber sugar and carbohydrates total 35 to 40 per day you will start to notice symptom improvements and that's really important because that'll make the treatment a lot better so just a couple more questions here hi rob hi anthony christian i'm so happy kate that you found this helpful 
Parasites are all around us. And when we're sick, when we have these horrible symptoms, whatever they are, think parasites, honestly. It's not just from eating raw pork. It's from any fish. It's from our, our water, our, our water, our pets, etc. What can I use to deworm? And that's a good question. Next week, I'll be here again, five o'clock Pacific on YouTube and Facebook, Live Disease Free. And I will be talking about treatments for parasites. And I hope you guys join me because that is going to be really good. I will be talking for the first time about various drugs that we're using and herbs and the pros and cons and what we found as far as, because it is challenging, especially when we have chronic disease to treat these parasites well enough. So I'm going to be sharing with you again, it's for educational purposes and I am not recommending anything, but I'm just going to share with you some of the common ones. You have to be tested to see which of the treatments are most effective for you. And you have to work with someone because they are drugs and you have to use them safely. Otherwise you could hurt yourself, but they're incredibly helpful. And I, on their own, they're not enough either. We use it in a system. And so what about, yes, Parkinson's, parasites, absolutely. Laney. So is it possible to feel dehydrated after the parasite medicine? You shouldn't. Um, not at all. No. So can I describe why muscle twitching spasms occur as a neurological symptoms and how to, how parasites play a role? I don't know the exact mechanism, whether it is the parasites in the intestines that are being treated or if it's a par I think that it's the parasites in the intestines. I do know that by the time we have multiple sclerosis and other neurological diseases, we have lesions in our central nervous system, which are pockets of infection, pockets of parasites. But we do know that with our students that as they treat the parasites systemically, but they may still have the lesions, but they become symptom free of the spasms through clearing the intestines well enough. So my, I suspect that the parasites in the intestines are causing a lot of the spasticity and as they're treated well enough, then the spasms are gone. We've had lots of students that recover from spasticity. Hi, Naomi. Over the past two months, you've been overheated. And I know we're in the summertime session right now, and it's really hard for those of us, hot baths or hot temperatures. You, if you treat the parasites, you'll, you will be able to enjoy the wonderful summer weather again. That's the only way to recover. And right now, because you're suffering, make sure to stay cool. So Frida, seriously, you wanna to go to a doctor feeling just awful? Yes, the program is exactly, so in the academy, in the Live Disease Free Academy, I help students to access the treatments, to access practitioners, to know. The thing is, you have to know all of this yourself because the practitioners that we work with, they, they, they're willing to work with us, but they really don't have a lot of experience yet in treating parasites, which is crazy. It's a skill that's been lost. The veterinarians could help us, I'm sure, quite well, but unfortunately, they're not allowed to. So this is where you need to understand what you need, and then you work in a partnership relationship with integrated practitioners to get access to the treatments. But really, you have to know this. And once you know it, you know it for the rest of your life, and you will definitely be deworming yourself off and on throughout your life, because that is honestly the key to living a long life, is not just eating right and exercising, but it's managing the microbes that live in you. As you keep the bad parasites down and you keep the good microbes up, you feel younger and you look younger and it's amazing and all the symptoms go away. Yes, the parasites definitely, there's different ways that the things that they produce and even just the direct damage they cause, they, they cause an immune response. We get these cytokine cascades and so we can get all kinds of symptoms. And so the symptoms are really the immune system's reaction to the parasites. And as you get rid of the parasites, the immune system settles down. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys go. So 
If this is your first time, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can join me live next week when I talk about the treatments. We're going to talk a lot about different parasite drugs. Again, I'm trusting that you are going to understand that I am not recommending any drug for you because I don't know what parasites you have. I don't know you, but I can support you in helping to build a plan to treat. But I just want to give you some ideas on you know, the pros and cons of herbs for parasites and drugs and what we're using, what we're seeing works well, etc. So that's going to be five o'clock Pacific Wednesday next week on Facebook and on YouTube, Live Disease Free. And also, please, if you like what I shared today, share it and like it. Help us get the word out. We need to have discussions about this. We need to have more and more people becoming aware and demanding to be able to treat parasites to recover from chronic disease. Please type your questions again underneath this video and we will answer them all. We love to answer your questions. You can also join our Live Disease Free community. So it is the Live Disease Free community on Facebook. And that way you will also be more connected. There is a little cheat sheet for the eating plan, which is awesome. You can put it on your fridge. And that eating plan is incredible. Like it's the Live Disease Free eating plan. So it's a cheat sheet for that. It really helps you to decrease the food to the parasites, but give your body lots of nutrition and you'll start to feel a lot better, just as Anne mentioned on one of the comments here. So with that, I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a wonderful week and we will see you next week talking about the treatments for parasites. Take care and bye-bye for now.